Hi, I'm Telly Leung, and I'm currently in the cast of Godspell, and I'm here actually in my dressing room where I get ready for the show eight times a week. Um, I'm originally born and raised from Brooklyn, New York, right here in New York City, um, from a very traditional Chinese home. Um, I went to high school in New York City. I went to a high school called Stuyvesant High School, which was actually specialized in math and science, so how I ended up as an actor, who knows. Um, but actually, I started getting to Broadway and in theater in high school. It was kind of an after-school hobby for me in my very rigorous math and science environment, and it was a nice escape from the calculus and the physics and the biology, and what was a hobby then turned into my profession. Then I started looking for colleges and universities that I could go to to study theater formally, and um, miraculously, I landed at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, which is actually one of the oldest degrees in drama in the country. Um, they, uh, some, some pretty awesome alums have come out of that school. Um, Patrick Wilson and Sherry Jones and Holly Hunter and uh, Ted Danson, Judith Light. And then I actually ended up going to college with some recent folks as well that you might know, like Zachary Quinto and Matt Bomer and um, Megan Hilty. Um, all of those folks were kind of at school when I was at school as well. And um, it's, it's a really amazing theater program. That's where I got most of my training. Um, my senior year in college, I, we were doing Company, Stephen Sondheim's Company as my senior musical. And Billy Porter, another esteemed alum from Carnegie Mellon, came back to direct the show. Um, his Broadway show, when he graduated from Carnegie Mellon, was his first Broadway show was Miss Saigon, the original Broadway cast of Miss Saigon. And he knew a lot of the people in the Asian Broadway community. And so he said, hey, he called up his dance captain, Mark Oka, who was also the dance captain of Flower Drum Song at the time, and said, hey, uh, Mark Oka, I have this Asian kid in my, in my school, in my alma mater right now. He's playing Bobby and company. He's really, really great. He has no agent, but I think you should see him for the Broadway revival of Flower Drum Song. So I think he should come and audition. So I was in tech rehearsal for Billy's production of company at college. I ended tech at midnight in Pittsburgh, took the Greyhound bus from Pittsburgh to New York, got to Port Authority by like 9 in the morning or something, and by 10 in the morning I was at Ripley Greer Studios auditioning for my first Broadway show, which was the 2002 revival of Flower Drum Song, starring Lea Salonga, and I got it. How insane. I, like Billy, I kind of knew that I was going to be graduating with a Broadway show, something that never, ever, ever happens, and I think, I, I count myself so lucky that I was one of those folks that kind of knew where I was going when I graduated college. You know, I didn't have the, the Avenue Q question of like, where do I go? What's mm -hmm. my purpose? Like, I, I think the universe was like, this is what you're supposed to do. And so I um, start my first Broadway show was Flower Drum Song. We opened and closed in four months. It was a joyful, wonderful, you know, dream come true to do it, but it also was a big reality check that... Um, you know, just because you make it on Broadway doesn't mean that you're there forever. And shows open and shows close. And, um, you know, you go from being on Broadway one day to pounding the pavement the next. Um, but luckily, I, I then started working at some amazing regional theaters all over the country. Um, I first got my equity card at the Muni um, in St. Louis. It was while I was still in college and I would work my summers at the Muni, um, which is an awesome, awesome theater. Um, it's 12,000 seats outdoors, and uh, I call it music theater boot camp because you will do one show at night. You could be doing Oklahoma at night um, for a week, but during the day, you're rehearsing the next show in the season. You're rehearsing Singing in the Rain that, you know, during the day, so you're busy all day long. You're dancing from 10 till 6 and singing and rehearsing the next show, and then at night, you're doing the show that you're already, you're already performing, which is so, so cool, and I learned a ton there, and I, you know, when Flower Drums on Clothes, I went back to the Muni and did a show. I went back to... A Pittsburgh CLO, which was another great theater that I loved working at, to do a show. Um, and, and then I was lucky enough to land my next Broadway show, which was the Broadway revival of Pacific Overtures. Um, a Stephen Sondheim musical in the 70s that um, had, had a very short run, but um, I, I felt like was kind of ahead of its time about the Americans opening up Japan to the rest of the Western world um, and, and Commodore Perry coming to Japan. Um, and um, it was a, that was another dream come true, to be able to work with Stephen Sondheim on a show. Uh, it, was, uh, it was also the year of his 70th birthday, and there were so many celebrations uh, 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 all, over the, all over the city and all over New York to celebrate his 70th birthday. And to be a part of a Sondheim show during that really special time was 
was really awesome and to have Steve in a room giving you notes and adjustments and 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 giving you giving you acting notes it, it was incredible um, from Pacific Overtures I actually uh, uh, got Wicked in Chicago I was I played the original Bach in the Chicago company of Wicked because Joe Mantello, the director of Wicked, saw me in Pacific Overtures and, um, and, and liked my work there and said, Why don't, we would love for you to open the company. And that was, first of all, this was only the third company of Wicked to exist. Now I think there are seven or eight companies of Wicked that exist in the world right now. But um, at the time, it was a big, big deal um, because we had the, the had, we had the Broadway cast running, then we had the first mm -hmm. national company going around the country, and then they, when they landed in Chicago, I think they sold out the entire six-week Chicago run in like a day. Wow. So they said, let's, let's have a sit-down Chicago production. So they had to throw a production together very, very quickly. Um, and that was so fun. I never thought I'd get to live in Chicago for a year, but I, I, I met some, some amazing friends there that have remained friends for life. Um, Anna Gastar was our Alphaba from Saturday Night Live fame. Mm -hmm. Kate Reinders was our Glinda, and we had a slew of amazing local Chicago actors that were with us, including Rondi Reed, Tony Award winner Rondi Reed from August Osage County. Um, she is a proud Chicago native and a proud member of the Steppenwolf Company, and she was also in that company, along with Heidi Kettenring and Jean Wygant, who are Chicago staples. Stephen Skybell was our Dr. Dilliman, and my dear friend Christopher Cusick was playing Fierro. It was a wonderful, wonderful company, and so cool, and kind of a bold experiment to say, can, can this show survive in Chicago? And we opened the show, it was a big, big hit, and the show, I think, ended up running for five years in mm -hmm. Chicago, before it then picked up and became the second national tour. Um, but that was a really, really fun, fun time, and I, I felt so lucky also to be non-traditionally cast in a role. Uh, I love the folks over there, the, the powers that be at Wicked, Stephen Schwartz and Joe Mantello and David Stone for kind of always thinking outside the box when it comes to casting actors, especially actors of color. Um, their first national tour had an African-American Fierro, mm -hmm. and you know, this Chicago company had an, an Asian-American Bach. And um, then the tour after that had an Asian-American Nessa Rose that did the show for a very long time, Dee Dee Lynn Magno. Um, and I, I, I really applaud them for, for saying, hey, this is Oz. Why shouldn't Oz, it's Oz. Why shouldn't Oz be as diverse as the world around us? And I felt so lucky to be part of a show that was not only just a show, but also a phenomenon. I felt like the show kind of surpassed, surpassed music theater. It became, it became this a phenomenon, mm -hmm. really. And, and I, I count myself very lucky that I've, I've been a part of projects that have been phenomenons. Um, which leads me to the next Broadway show I did, which was Rent mm -hmm. on Broadway. Um, Rent was a show that I saw when I was 16 years old. I, I watched that original Broadway cast, and it used to be that at Rent, if you um, slept with the bums on 41st Street, you got your ru rush ticket. You know, you had to sleep there very early in the morning, at like 5 or 6 in the morning. The box office opened at 10, and the first two rows were give were sold for $20. And at 16, those were the only tickets that I could afford to rent. So I think I must have done that like 20 times in that one summer, the summer of 96, 97, when that first original Broadway cast came out. And, um, and then fast forward exactly 10 years, it is now 2006, and I am standing on the line singing Seasons of Love, looking down at the seat that I sat in 10 years ago watching the show. It must um, have been surreal. It was incredibly surreal. And I stayed with that show for... Um, another two years. Um, and then I went on uh, the, the what they called the Broadway tour, which was kind of the big farewell tour of Rent. Um, Adam Pascal and Anthony Rapp, the original Roger and Mark, um, headlined a, a tour, um, a national tour of the show that went to Japan and Korea, and a lot of the members of the closing, the final company of Rent, um, came on board to do that tour as well. And um, that was really, really great to kind of take this phenomenon of a show all over the country and really see firsthand how this music and this piece affected people. You know, as a New Yorker, I know what the show meant to New York for the 13 years it ran on Broadway, but then to go to places like Cleveland and go to places like Schenectady mm -hmm. and then to go abroad and go to places like Tokyo and go to places like Seoul, Korea and see that the power of this show and how affected these people were by rent, it was really incredible to see that, wow, like even uh, even people in Tokyo, where English is not their first language, 
cry at all the same places that I cried at in the show when I was 16 years old and watching it for the very mm -hmm. first time. And to know that now I'm a part of that was really amazing. Um, when I 